So here we are with the default template. Now one big change compared to 1.1 and 1.2 is that all of the default templates have merged into one. Now there's this object at the top of the hierarchy where you can select which module you have. So the way this works is if I select these modules for example, shooter and melee, and we go into these conditions so it will look um, we don't have any of them we have melee we have shooter and we have melee shooter now they all work the same it's just you know different objects get uh, instantiated but the way it works is that it will add the component of shooter I shouldn't be moving this it will add the player shooter component to the player it will add the melee component to the player. It will instantiate the HUD actions for gun combat. Sort uh, the actions, sorry, um, the actions for sword combat, and it will uh, instantiate the contextual actions that also support melee and shooter. And in this case, that's really just the takedowns because nothing else is different in the contextual actions then um, these options will simply parent those instantiated objects to the player just to make sure that they are still in the same hierarchy now this might not be, not be necessary but it makes it easier to organize and just to make sure you have everything in the same place and um, it will also instantiate new breakable objects that support melee and shooter and yeah i mean that's uh, that's really all it does so a lot of instantiating and adding components now the reason i did this is because having you know 10 different 10 scenes that are practically the same um, but just with some updated uh, controls and support for different modules didn't make a lot of sense now the same happens for the inventory module as well and this will ac actually instantiate a the panels in the UI. Now I've slightly changed the way the UI is structured just to make sure this would actually work. So you'll see a slightly different structure if you really dig into it. It will look the same, function the same. Um, yeah, it's just a slightly different structure. So that's it really when it comes to these pools. So let's actually try this out. So I'm going to turn everything off and you'll see how this works. So yeah, all of this is, uh, is still going to be the same. One other thing that has changed is that the minimap is no longer um, a child of the player. It's because the minimap actually functions the way a mini minimap should properly function. Um, so it um, displays the area. It doesn't rotate around with the player. Um, there was honestly uh, a bit of a strange uh, thing. Um, one of the things I really wanted to change. So same for the norm, uh, the big map, of course. Um, I've also changed the text. Now it properly says blue cube instead of red cube. So here we are at the second change and that's swimming. Now in first instance, it might actually look really, really similar, um, but I've completely changed the way uh, swimming is built. And um, the reason for this is that we now also support um, diving. Now, yes, the diving animation isn't sleek, so if you have better ones, I definitely um, recommend using that. This is something I added last minute, and I just wanted diving to function, but I definitely would recommend using different animations for the diving, but functionally it works. And the way it works is that you hold mouse and spacebar to, and then the controls to go down, you let go of mouse and just hold space to go up. Obviously, you can change all of these buttons yourself, um, but yeah, that's the way it works. I'd also recommend using a, you know, a nice water object uh, asset or um, just use post-processing volumes, for example, which can also mimic underwater effects. So yeah, it might look really similar, but actually the functionality is completely different. There's now an object on the player um, so that it no longer immediately starts swimming when you enter the water. So it's not 
based on the player object, there's an object on the player that at the right height it will actually start swimming and diving. So a better mechanic um, that allows you to do a slight bit more. Now, as you can see we only have two objects here so we still have our combat mode of course but we only have two objects and that's it. So if I now go out of play mode and I activate the melee and shooter module I'll be greeted with um, most of the same information. Yes, this is our HUD. Let's swim really fast. There we go. And now you will see that we have our um, weapons as well. And we have these objects. Now I just want to highlight, I didn't apply any force to the sword. So yes, um, it is actually applying damage, it is working, um, but because there's no force to the sword, the objects will, uh, will not move around really that much. Just a tiny bit. So it is working, you just need to hit a lot, so obviously you can change the health for that. And the same with shooter, you know, just... So yeah, and that's pretty much how it functions, so everything else is pretty much the same. The only thing I have removed for now is the uh, traversal uh, components, because um, I want to redo those. Um, they were not functioning um, the way I wanted to, so that's, uh, that's something I changed. So when it comes to um, functionality and how everything works, we have this new folder here, um, which is called Player Skills Prefabs. And everything we, um, we have in here um, will also be located in here. So if something isn't working the way you want it to, or um, you want to change something, um, this is a place to do it. Now, by default, everything will be on the player. Not everything, just the contextual actions will not be. Um, as they are instantiated on start so um, but yeah that's uh, that's pretty much the way all of this works so thought I would highlight all of this functionality um, and that's pretty much all there is to it if you really want to find out how to uh, how all of this really works and if you want to change things I definitely recommend getting a, a good grasp on how Game Creator works in general. Um, but one of the definitely more interesting things, and it took me a while to figure out um, how to name these, was actually instantiating um, instantiating components, uh, Game Creator components on uh, on Start, which was uh, quite a hassle to figure out how to do that. So that's uh, at least a really nice thing. But other than that, this scene has mostly remained the same. Um, not a lot of changes to the default scene. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.